So we have arrived at a very small, classed as a campsite in a place called Edigi. We are about 80 k's outside Carnarvon uh, and this is just like a little free uh, stop. It's graveled, it's level. There are some picnic tables over there in the distance. You can maybe make out there's a couple of dump points and over there, there are some toilets. They are long drop toilets. Long drop toilets are interesting to say the least. This is what a long drop toilet looks like. And you manually pump it with this thing. Um, well, what can I say? It's just a basic toilet. Uh, we will be using our own facilities. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's kind of surprising that there are so many of these types of sites around. Just coming up the main road, we passed several. We passed a couple, to be honest, that were nicer than this, but we wanted to get a bit further down the road. But considering these sites are completely free, um, it has got a toilet, it, has, it is dry, it is flat. There's picnic tables uh, and, and dump points. So for anybody that's pretty self-contained like us, we've got all the facilities that we need. We really just want somewhere to park, where uh, ideally where other people are, so you feel nice and safe as well. Uh, you can use your generators here. We probably won't bother with ours tonight. We've turned the gas on and chances are we'll have uh, beans on toast or something of that nature just for ease and then move on to Carnarvon tomorrow. So, all good. So following our uh, free overnighter at, what was that called? Energy, Energy. Energy. Energy or something like that. I could just whatever Ed. it was. Ed. Um, Ed, Energy. whatever, Energy. anyway. It was, that was just a free overnighter. And which was good. We had we, we there, both slept really well, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, it was good. Absolutely pitch black. There was quite a few other people around, so nice and safe. Um, no issues there. So we've driven just over an hour up to Carnarvon now, and uh, we've just booked in at what was it called? Oasis. Coral Coast. Coral I think, Coast. Right in the centre, Carnarvon. Coral Coast touring Dinner. holiday camp or something. I don't know. Uh, but we're booked in for one night, we'll pro more than likely Sorry, extend it. Mm. Yeah, it's only a few minutes away, so we're just letting uh, Sid have a quick walk and do what he needs to do. And then we'll go and find our plot and see what they've given us. This is a nice little coastline though, it seems quite pretty. It seems a bit different than the last time we were here. I don't know whether they've developed this coastline a little bit more, but it's quite nice. We've actually just received a phone call from a good friend of ours who's just announced to us that she's retiring on Wednesday. Congratulations. So, uh, congratulations, Kim. <laughs> You're going to love it. So we're now fully installed on the Coral Coast Tourist Park, um, which is very nice. We initially just booked in for the one day, but I've just called into the office and booked us in for a second day because uh, it's quite nice here. It's got all the facilities. Uh, the toilet blocks and everything are lovely, which is handy. So there's the boss and the guard dog doing the thing, uh, which at the moment seems to be very little. <laughs> We've just connected up for the first time our washing machine. This is the washing machine hose. And by pure chance, I just with a stretch got it into the thing there. My good friend Kevin uh, suggested that it was a good idea to cut it in half because they were too long. <laughs> I'm beginning to think cutting it in half was possibly a bit much. <laughs> I'll just show you the um, ablutions facilities here. It's all like that and you get your own toilet and hand basin and shower. I mean, that is very nice. I think if all caravan sites were like that, it would be, uh, it would be lovely. But we're quite nicely set up there. There is a very nice pool area there and a lovely little communal area here with the barbecue, which is really nice. How cool is that? Yeah, very nice little site. Very, uh, very impressed, and it's right in the in the sort of town centre. You can stroll out, and Woolworths is right there, and 
and just round the corners of the coast. So yeah, all good. We'll have a nice couple of days here and then uh, maybe even make it a third. We'll see how we go. I've just spotted this. I just spotted this as I was sat outside our van. Just check this out. I have never seen anything like this. How about that? That is a camper trailer on the back of a truck. I've just been talking to this gentleman and he bought this truck with the intention of putting a camper trailer on the back and traveling around Australia in it. He's been traveling now for two years and um, loving every minute of it. Apparently this thing does, I think he said 20 liters to the 100 kilometers, um, which is probably about 12 miles per gallon, something like that. But he can literally go anywhere, anywhere. Absolutely amazing and how cool it is just to be doing it different. You're really not gonna see many people doing it in something like that, are you? That is freaky. He's also just told me that he's working on version three. This is version two. <laughs> version three has uh, some significant uh, changes and upgrades, but uh, really wicked, absolutely brilliant. Well, good morning all from uh, Carnarvon again. <laughs> So we're, uh, we're on the move today. We're heading a bit further north. We're gonna head up to um, a rest stop, we think, which is called, well, it's, it's, it's spelt Minilaya. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I keep getting all the pronunciation wrong. Um, but that's where we're aiming for today. And uh, if it's decent, that's where we'll stay. If it's not, we'll carry on and find something else. But we just had a quick breakfast and it's time to start packing up. I've got the uh, I've got the staff in doing the thing this morning. Not showering guests. She's she's uh, she's not paid to talk. Just just carry on. Get on. Just, just get on with it. <laughs> yes, the uh, the guard dog is um, well. He's not come round yet. He'll he'll be uh, he'll be coming round and on, on with his duties uh, very shortly, I should say. So when we're, when we're packing up, it generally takes about 45 minutes or so to put stuff away. So uh, I'll give you a bit of an idea what's involved with that. So it's a nice fresh morning this morning. Um, just a nice temperature for getting organised. Nice clear blue sky. I think we're aiming for about 25 degrees today. So we had a bit of a, an odd job day yesterday. We've had two nights in Carnarvon and um, both quiet nights, no problems, everything good. Um, but yesterday we spent most of the day just doing a bit of um, housework really, I suppose you'd call it. And he was uh, doing a lot of washing, catching up with washing. They got a good laundry here. So she got on top of all the washing and cleaning the place. And, um, and I did a fair bit of, well, I cleaned the motor home basically, because it was pretty minging. But uh, I got me a little thing out and Got all the squash flies off and stuff, so probably a bit pointless really. I'll just go and dirty it again today, but a bit of OCD kicking in probably. So first thing to do this morning is get the hoses in, which can be a bit awkward, they're a bit of a pain. Okay, so with a bit of a struggle, these are... Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe these will fit in the storage bin now. So let's have a look. They are notoriously hard things to wrap up um, and you've got to wrap them up hoping that you've got them to the right size to fit in the storage bin. So let's see how we go. If I can do this with one hand. Get in. Oh, well, that's not too bad. That was a reasonable guess. Not easy. Not easy with one hand. But maybe is gonna go in just, just about. Might have be a bit of a push to get that door closed. <laughs> so next one is the water hose. That's considerably easier. That goes in uh, that compartment there with the other one. So that's the fresh water hose, a bit easier to wrap up. And that should just stick in there quite easily. That one almost wraps itself up really. Not bad at all. That's the hose is done. What have I forgot? So I just need to turn off the gas, which is in here. And that's a simple 
There's that. And then it's just electric to come off. Get rid of that cable, put him away. So that is him nicely stored and he should tuck quite easily in there. Like that. So that's the basic packing up done. Um, our onboard water tank, which is 125 litres, is full. Our grey water tank is empty. Um, we've got 400 watts of solar and a decent sized battery. So we are pretty should be pretty good to completely off grid under our own power for three, potentially four days. Um, we might, we've only done one up to now, um, but we might be doing two or maybe three days on the trot this time. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, but externally, I'll just get all these latches closed and locked uh, and then we can have a quick flick round inside and then it's have a shower and clear off. Uh -huh. We're almost ready to roll the obligatory and very important checklist now. This is absolutely imperative because if you don't do this, it could be very expensive mistakes. Right, Angie? Legs up, got to empty the toilet. I've turned the gas off, the water tank's full. We're moving snow chocks and ramps, we didn't have any out. Check all the lockers are locked, all windows are closed, bathroom vents closed, uh, shower yeah. doors locked, check that. Bathroom, get roof vents closed, roof vents screens are open, both TVs are secured, both TVs unplugged, wrap the grill in the towel, put them towel. Lift the bed and pull the slide in. Right. Sid's lid is on his bowl. Right, we can roll safely, we think. <laughs> So there's only one job left to do now, and it's, and it's the one that Angie always fights me for, and I say, no, no, I insist, I'll do it. I'm the man of the house. But, and, and she says, no, 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 I want to, I want to do it. We are, of course, talking about emptying the toilet. We've never had that conversation. It's a conversation I'd like to have, because... You'd just say, yeah, go on, you do I'd say, yeah, all right, go on, your turn. <laughs> It's not a nice job. Here he is, his favourite job. Just imagine the face he's pulling. Okay, so Angie's just nipped into Woolworths to get some supplies. Um, I've just give the van a quick vacuum out because of all the... It was like cushed shells, the site that was on millions and millions of little tiny cushed shells and they get everywhere. So I've just vacuumed the van out, got that nice and clean, give Sid a quick walk on the field. He's done what he needed to do. So uh, we're just waiting for Angie and then we can be on our way. So for anyone not familiar with WA and WA roads, this is sort of typically what we're looking at most of the time. Roads are pretty much empty. There's very little traffic once you get out of the cities. Uh, I mean, it just so happens there's three vehicles coming the other way, but sometimes you can go for about half an hour and there's nothing in front of you, nothing behind you. You don't have to worry about traffic much. We have seen a few eagles kind of flying over the road, um, looking for their uh, lunch. But other than that, we've not seen much of anything else recently. So we've arrived at our stop for today. Um, I believe it's pronounced Manilia. Um, there's really nothing here, it's basically just a safe place to stop. As you can see there's quite a few uh, vans already set up and they'll probably stay for the evening. Um, so it's just a, somewhere to stay, it's another freebie and uh, no facilities as such. I think there's a basic toilet somewhere, probably another long drop uh, and there is a dump point so we can empty our toilet in the morning. Um, so yeah, all good. Angie is just knocking up a quick chicken wrap, I believe. So I'll just go and make mincemeat out of that. And uh, then we'll probably take the dog for a bit of a wander and uh, chill for the rest of the afternoon, I should think. Seem to have picked up a few mini beasts along the way, which is a bit frustrating, being as I spent all afternoon cleaning the motorhome. Again, no shortage of flies around here. It's the biggest frustration about rural Australia. Wherever you go, there are flies. And I don't care what people say, you don't get used to them. Anyway, chicken wrap time. 
Well, good morning. It's uh, about 8.30 in the morning. We're still in Manila. We had a good night's sleep last night. Um, everything was, it was really nice and quiet and lovely. A lot of the people have already left the site. There's um, quite a lot gone already. We're very much on a transit kind of uh, road here. It's just the main road up to, um, well, various major towns. Um, so everybody's just kind of passing through, really. Come on, city. So in terms of a few facts and figures and such like, we spent the night here completely under our own power last night. Um, our water tank is still showing completely full. We've just had washes and made drinks and things like that. So we're not impacted on that at all. Um, our battery power is, we've lost two bars of 10. So we've used 80 odd, uh, we've still got, should I say, 80 odd percent of our power, uh, which considering we had lights on and we watched telly for a couple of hours and such like, um, I think that's pretty good. And that will soon be back up to uh, 100% within a two or three hours today uh, from the solar. The other interesting thing is we drove um, for a couple of hours to get here yesterday and um, we averaged 11.4 litres to the 100, which is pretty damn brilliant. I'm very pleased with the fuel consumption. Come on, city. Good boy. Right, time for a bit of breakfast, and then we're moving on to a place called Yanari today. And we went for a walk with the dog last night and put our fly nets on over our hats. Uh, I should have done that this morning. They're very much awake now. So we have now entered the Pilbara region of Western Australia, and we've just arrived at our next stop, which is called Yanari Rest Area. It's another one of the uh, free rest stops with effectively no facilities, really. The only little issue being it's currently 35 degrees out there, isn't it, babe? It's a little warm. So we don't take the dog out, he'd burn his toes. So we are effectively chilling for the next few hours. Um, we're just gonna, we've got the fans on, it's quite nice in here. So we're just gonna have a read and a chill, a bit of lunch, um, and wait for it to cool down a little bit. And then um, it's just an, an, another overnight stop. Um, on the way here, this just gives you an idea of the sort of terrain that we have been driving through. Um, a whole load of nothing. <laughs> we did see plenty of eagles though, but we tried to film them, but they just look like dots and you can't get them close enough. Yeah, there's several times, probably at least half a dozen times, we've seen really big eagles and they circle round looking down over the road. Um, I think they're making the most of the heat rising off the tarmac and looking for prey, obviously. Um, you, you see them and we basically go underneath them, but they're very hard to catch on film, but they're obviously big. You, you can't really quite get... They're so much bigger than normal birds, yeah, aren't you, they? You, you, you can't they really out get a lot more. to see just how big they are because mm. they're too far away. But, yeah. Well, we'll try and catch one. If we, if we saw one by the roadside where it had caught something, it would be really good to film <laughs> um, because they look like they're really big. But uh, anyway, we'll continue. What we did see was uh, uh, we stopped at one point and there was a lady in one of these little pull-ins where she had um, uh, fly nets for her dogs. Which we've um, seen on the internet. I've seen pictures of them before, but I've never actually seen anybody using them. Uh, but they are a good idea. Um, I mean, we use our fly nets periodically, don't we? And, and well, of we course, use them twice on this holiday the, the now. The flies will hassle the dogs um, just as much as they'll hassle the people. I think Sid might just rip it up, though, rather than uh, use it as it's used for. Yeah, Sid, Sid's not very tolerant of things like that. I don't think, um, yeah, He's I more don't a think shredder. that would work with Sid. <laughs> He's more of a shredder, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'll just give you a quick look round. This is the Yanari rest area. There's basically nothing to see. It's effectively just a car park, a little tiny bit of shade, some picnic uh, benches. Uh, in this part, there's one other motorhome here. 
Um, I would expect more will come in as the afternoon passes by. Um, but there's quite a few caravanners and other people over there in the distance that have gone on the red dirt. Um, I'd hope that a few more would come in this area here this afternoon. Um, otherwise we might just move over there a little bit further away from the road. The road is literally right there. So you, know, you just don't want anybody uh, coming messing around in, uh, in the early hours of the morning or anything like that. Not that I think they would, to be honest. I mean, there's just people traveling out here, really. Nothing going on. So the drawback, if you're looking for a drawback with these free rest stops, is that when you get here, there is literally nothing to do, really. You're, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, if you get here at about 1 p.m., as we did today, especially if it's hot, uh, there's really not a lot to do. But at the end of the day, you're just traveling, that's all it is. Somebody else just pulling in here now. Well, there's constantly people coming and going. Yeah, so some people will pull in and just have a cup of tea or a sandwich or something just to have a break from the driving. But I think as the afternoon goes by today, more will come in with the intention of uh, staying over. So it's lunchtime now, and uh, I believe we're finishing off the chicken with another chicken wrap. Ha, ha, ha.